Hello everybody, it is Tuesday, May 16th, and I'm celebrating my two-year animal-based, you could say, carnivorsary, and um, I, this is the second part. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to do three parts because this is something that I thought of that I would just um, bring out to you and um, basically go through what's happened to me. Uh, part one, if you check it out, I'll post the link below or at the end. Um, two years being animal based, all the physical things, the changes, the health issues that have been resolved. This one is sort of, this video is going to be the things that I've come to realize and sort of the arguments against, we'll say the mainstream or the status quo. And these are things that have dramatically affected my life. And I've come to realize, and like I, I've always said, this is, this is my, it's my experience. It's my experience. It's my experiment on myself. And, you know, a lot of the comments, which I really do appreciate, um, are from people that are just starting this way of thinking, this lifestyle, um, an animal-based approach. And, you know, I, I, my advice is it takes, it takes time. Everybody's different. The degree of where your body's at as far as health is going gonna, is gonna to be dramatically different from person to person. So uh, my advice to somebody that's just starting out is stick with it. Stick with it, give it some time, and th the things will change. Um, it's, it's, you know, the results are out there. You just have to look online and, and have a look at all the people that are changing. Anyway, this is Anthony Stewart, this is Food for Thought. We are questioning everything they've ever said because they say a lot of shit that I now have come to not agree with. So over the last two years, and a bit, little backstory about myself from starting low carb, um, I was all about the numbers. I tracked calories, I tracked macros, I tracked what I was doing, supplements, uh, my workouts, everything, um, basically a daily log. And I was writing everything down because I was really into, you know, how my body was, was getting affected by this low carb keto diet. And things started to change when I, when I did, you know, drop the carbohydrates. And eventually what happened was I just came into being a lot more intuitive. Um, I don't write things down anymore because I kind of go with, with how I feel. And for me, this is my way. It's, it, it works. And, you know, until I start, I guess a decline, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing because I, I think I've got a grasp on the, on the big picture. So I'm, that's why I'm always telling you guys to encourage, I'm encouraging you to find your way. There's a lot of shit out there. There's a lot of information that doesn't make sense. There's a lot of conflicting information and it's up to you to use your thinking and use your brain to guide yourself through this maze, so to speak. And I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I'm a, I'm, I'm a, a normal guy that's, that's come to realize that the things aren't what they seem. So I'm going to do this part two. This is what I've, I've come to realize with myself. Part three will be a little bit more into the, the spiritual side of, of, of how I've got to where I'm at and what I've done and what's changed. And these things are greatly affected. So first one, just a, uh, yesterday I, was work, I worked 16 hours. Um, you should have seen the stairs that I was walking all day. 50,000 steps. I'm not lying. And up and down stairs all day in the hot sun. No sunburn. Why? This is like, I don't know if you understand, Vancouver was raining and, and sort of cold up until about four or five days ago, and it's been hot sun ever since. I've been outside as much as I can with my shirt off, no sunscreen, no burns. So yesterday I was in the sun from basically 9 a.m. until the sun went down at about 8.30, 9 o'clock, no sunburn. How is that possible? We're supposed to be you know, staying out of the sun. So that leads me to the first topic is the vitamin D thing. It's real. Isn't it funny how they don't, they want you to stay out of the sun. They want you to put, slap, slop, slip, whatever sunscreen all the time. I think there's a lot more to it than that. And I think we've been, you know, it's, it's arguable conspiracy that they don't want us to be healthy. It's pretty simple. Sunshine is good. All life revolves around the sun. Without the sun, we don't exist. Life doesn't exist. It makes sense to me 
that it's one, if not the most important thing. By getting in the sunlight, you can you can you can take away the jet lag. By getting in the sunlight, you can adjust your circadian rhythms. Not to mention the vitamin D side of things. And I have an app on my phone. I've I've shared it before. It's called D Minder. You can go on it, and it will tell you when the sun is the most optimal for vitamin D. And you know, if you put on sunscreen, it it blocks the rays that do this. So vitamin D absorption. Cholesterol is, imper- is, is, is important for it. So fat and cholesterol make sense in that vitamin D and the sun. So get out into the sun as much as possible. Obviously don't burn, but that's the number one thing that I've found over the last few years. I don't burn. Why? All my life as a kid, sunscreen, like burning. And you know, I am I'm a little bit like I, I tan easy, but I always had a burn or two every year and I haven't had one for a long time. So that's huge. The second one is carbohydrates. This is a tough topic because people have are deep rooted in their beliefs. Sugar, starch, carbs. It's very simple. It's almost this is my my opinion. There's a knob. So if you're hooked or dependent or used to eating carbs six, seven times a day, it all breaks down to sugar. It all breaks down to glucose or fructose or whatever in your body. So Somebody who eats six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times a day and is always getting a sugar boost, your insulin is going crazy and your body's working overtime to try and deal with that energy. Insulin puts energy into cells. So if you are always on elevated insulin, how are you going to be able to use the energy that is potentially stored? It's just, you know what I mean? This is food for thought. So that's something to think about. All carbohydrates break down to sugar. If you start thinking from a different aspect, now there's stuff out there that says, you know, glucose is the primary fuel source for the body. Well, I would pose, I would oppose that and say it's, it's the most necessary to deal with first. So excess glucose is very toxic. I mean, I'm not going to go into the science. You can go check online. You know, the carb addiction doc, Rob Sivas, and he's got his uh, carb addiction dietitian. She's fantastic by explaining how much glucose is in there. I'll post a link below if I can find it, and you can check it out. And she breaks it down and shows you but the sugar packets in a glass of water, which is your blood. And, you know, once you get a, uh, an idea of how this stuff works, it starts to present itself with, you know, some problems. Um, Another one is microbiome. Everybody talks about gut health right now. Well, this is my theory. If you are giving your gut the, the bacteria it needs, but your gut is unable to deal with it because of other problems, how are you gonna how how is how are those mi- micro uh, how are those bacteria gonna cultivate? So if you focus on health structure gut stability, gut health first. Before you start worrying about your microbiome, it's my belief that this all comes into play naturally. Now, every, everywhere out there, fiber, fiber, fiber. There is another side of that. And that fiber is a non-essential nutrient. We do not need it to live as humans. Why would we have to eat a shit ton of it? Now, I'm, I'm not dogging anybody who is plant-based. I'm not dogging any vegans. There are different things and different ways to do things. I'm just saying what the general, like, you know, the the mainstream would say is that you must have fiber. You must have insoluble, soluble fiber. We're not going to go into details, but there is context and there is your gut status, which I think is a very important thing. It's underrated, but I think we're looking at the wrong things. Taking a bunch of probiotics is probably not the way to strengthen your gut. So whether they assimilate into your gut or not, and if our microbiome shifts in 24 hours, we'll just think about it. So if it's that, if it can be that diverse, how is our, our gut handling it? So all the nutrient absorption, a lot of magic happens in your gut, the vagus nerve, the brain, gut access, it's all out there. So you're going to have to do a little due diligence. If you're all about your gut, think about it. Leaky gut is real and it's all about the proteins. Hmm, think about that. Um, another thing that leads me to proteins and amino acids. If you take a look at a, a Dr. Peter Ballerstadt, he is a forage agronomist and he studies protein synthesis or protein in animals. Now I know we're not animals, well we are animals, but we're not 
the animals he studies, but it's very simple. We look at protein as a whole. When you look at a package of a nutri nutritional fact, you see X amount percentage protein, right? How many grams? That does not mean that is available protein. That's crude nitrogen. Very different. If you think about protein in this simple way, this changed my life. There's 20, 20 amino acids, nine of which are essential. Where do those amino acids come from? If you take your protein like a vitamin, where you need to make certain daily requirements, it makes sense to me to get the most complete protein. Now we can go into branch chain, all these different things, but this is not about that. This is just trying to tell you that the protein in a granola bar is probably not a complete protein and maybe to do with the timing of your meals might not even make a difference. So just that's food for thought. Another thing is fat, energy, and vitamins. Fat from animals, butter, have fat-soluble vitamins in them. Fat-soluble vitamins. Think about what that, just saying that would make sense that you need your vitamins from fat. Okay, so that all your fat-soluble vitamin A, D, E, K. Wow. So they're telling us not to eat this fat because it's bad. It's killing us. Saturated fat clogs your arteries and gives you a heart attack. Yet the most important nutrients, the most important vitamins are in the fat that they're telling us not to eat. And I'm just, just going to leave it at that. So I use fat for energy. I feel better. I'm rock solid all day. Yesterday is a perfect example. 16 hour day, up and down stairs, uh, lifting things in the sun. My energy was fine. I didn't eat till I got home at 1.30 in the morning. And I'm fine. I'm a little sore today. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little little tired. But that's okay. That's, that's, you know, that's called work. But the energy yesterday, running on fat, it's amazing. And that's a big difference in my life. Okay, and then that leads me to the energy side of workouts. Now, all the new people, all the people that are just starting this thing, you know, you're not going to run a marathon tomorrow. You're not going to be able to break world records in a sprint tomorrow. You're not going to be a bodybuilder tomorrow. If this is just my advice, I don't think the workout matters. I think it's moving that matters. So if you can take the time to do exercise, whatever it is, it's better than not. Okay? Get your tent. Like walk. Walking is fantastic for your health. So the more you move, the better you are. Now, that comes down to everybody's specific needs. I mean, some people, I and my hips are really tight, which my back is really strong. So I'm getting sort of a, 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 an obstruction in my hips, which is kind of causing, I need to, what I'm thinking is I need to be more mobile. Yoga, stretching, work on my hip flexors. It's contextual. So what your life requires is to move. That's my opinion. You don't have to be in the gym 16 hours lifting heavy weights. I think it's good to lift heavy once in a while. I think it's good to move fast once in a while. But I believe movement is key. That's the way I've, what I've come to grip. And that leads to healing. Now, I've had, you know, my, my healing potential is off the charts. And it, it, why? The first time in my life over the last few years, how is this happening? When I was a kid, I didn't heal this way. When I was in my 20s and 30s, I didn't heal this way. So there is something there. Now, this may take some time. Everybody's different. I've noticed over the last, especially two years since I've gone animal-based, that is a big issue for my life because we don't, we take, we, take it, we take for granted all the things we do. And I'll tell you, when you look at what causes the most injury, bending over to pick up a pen, lifting up to grab a dish, dropping something and freaking out. So all this ties in. You got to move. It's a very good idea. So that's, that's it. Now, hunger. I don't get hungry. I worked a crazy day yesterday. No hunger. Why are they telling us to eat 16 times a day? Why are they telling us to eat 6 to 11 servings of grains and cereals a day? Why are we hungry? Why can you not stop eating? Why is there no off switch? And let's do a little thought experiment here. Put 5 liters of water in front of you. Start drinking it. Drink it till you can't drink anymore. Your body will tell you to stop. But yet, we can crush 70 beers or Cokes or interesting, right? Like there's no off switch. Try and stop eating popcorn. Try and stop eating chips. There's no off switch. 
That's interesting. Now I can assure you, I put a five pound uh, prime rib roast in front of me. I will eat that thing until my body says stop. So that's another little side that's interesting. We have been told, we have been taught, and we have been force fed this stuff, which I think takes away from our natural human signaling. So that's just, it's just a quick one to just recap about this. This is part two. Please leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know how you're feeling. We're going to do part three very soon. Thanks to all the new people for subscribing. It's, you know, it's great. And I really appreciate all your comments. Stay strong.